I know you two like to talk about the good old days and what's gone wrong with old Dutch. Hey. How did we end up over this way? Huh? Well, I guess we know the answer to that. Sure, Arthur. And we're live! Welcome back to part 64 of the full game commentary and playthrough. I thought Arthur should spend some quality time with Hosea because, I don't know, you need to appreciate the people around you, your friends and family, the people you love. I'm your friendly neighbor at Super Antonio and please be sure to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell if you would enjoy seeing more of my Red Dead Redemption 2 content. Oh well, Dutch keeps yelling at us from the balcony. We better go see what he wants. Dutch may be recovered from having his bell rung at the trolley station, however he is still stinging from that Angelo Bronte setup. So, Arthur, you get the deciding vote. By what? We take an insult and scurry off like cockroaches? deal with business the right way. We don't need to take revenge. We hardly know the guy. This ain't about revenge, Hosea. Angelo Bronte don't mean shit to me. This is about the fact we are planning to rob a bank in his town. A bank that he no doubt protects. A town where his men are gunning for us. Before we do that, we need to put him I out of commission. I disagree. There's always an easier way. There ain't no easier way. Now, I know his type. He is a vindictive little power broker who rules by fear. Now, we pull that stunt in his cesspit of a town. We're doomed. You want to leave this place? Leave this country? We need that money. I just don't feel good, Dutch. This is it. This is the last job that we are ever going to pull. And this is the last job we are ever going to pull. Is it Dutch? Is it really? Just asking. Arthur, Dutch, and Hosea will take a moment to pose for the thumbnail and the Instagram. Link in the description if you'd like to follow, in addition to links for the merch store, my second channel, which features more podcast-related content, and our Discord. Before the year is out, we are going to be harvesting mangoes in Tahiti. Oh. Farmers. But we need seed capital, and we need to leave. You know it. I know it. Forgive me if I can't think too much about the mango harvest. This is I'm... it. Trust me. Arthur. If it's business, well, business is business. Angelo Bronte stands between us and our future. You'll damn us all. Arthur, come on. You better be right about this one. I am. I've heard that before, and usually I've been right. Uh, if you say so. Quit doubting, Arthur. It does no favors. Come on. We need to go see a man about a boat. A boat? We're headed to a settlement called Le Gras. I met a boatman there called Thomas who knows these waters like the back of his hand. Why do we need a boat? So we can attack Bronte's mansion from the swamp. Catch him off guard. He knows we survived the trolley station, so he'll be expecting some kind of reprisal. All right. Okay, makes sense. See? 
I do still possess some capacity for rational thought, Arthur. Okay, let's go for a ride with Dutch. This may get a little awkward, as Dutch seems to be in a bad mood. Thank you. For what? For taking my side back there. It ain't about sides. Feels like Jose has lost his spine. But this move on Bronte, is it for the bank job or revenge for what happened at the trolley station? Both. Neither. What does it matter? Dutch wants payback, and Arthur is confused because Dutch always taught Arthur that revenge is a fool's game. We need to hit that bank. And Bronte has the police and just about everything else in San Denis in his back pocket. He also set us up. And lest we forget, took young Jack. I understand. Dutch's core values are shifting, while Arthur's remain stable. We just got a lot of pots on the boil, given all the folks who's out gunning for us. You all seem to have forgotten how money is made and what it takes to support 20 people, let alone what it takes to give 20 people a new life overseas. With all due respect, Dutch, is this Tahiti plan really going to work out? You tell me, Arthur. Is it? Have some goddamn faith. I am bending over backwards to make a future for us. I know, but... But, but, but... When did you become so small-minded? If you'd rather we break up the family, go our separate ways, just tell me. Of course not. That threat to break up the family, to walk away, that's classic manipulative behavior. Textbook. Dutch is threatening Arthur while making it appear that Arthur and his questions are the actual threats. If anybody ever does this to you, run away. Or at least, be aware of what's going on. This isn't a prison camp. I am not forcing anybody to stay. So either we're in this together, working together to get out together, or we're not. There simply isn't a reality in which we do nothing and get everything. I know. You're right. Just feels like we're on borrowed time again. I mean, the old Driscoll's found us. Yeah, we need to move, and soon. Haven't I made that clear? I feel like I'm going in circles with all of you. Micah is the only one left with any loyalty. Anyway, here we are. Let me do the talking. And welcome to La Gras. It's a friendly fishing village. Not to be confused with La Kay. Thomas, it is good to see you, my friend. Hello, Mr. Dutch. Thomas, have you met Arthur? Arthur, Thomas is quite the boatman. He's going to help us get close to our prey. And here's Thomas. Thomas has a history with Dutch. Dutch helped him in the past, and now he is here to cash in on a favor. The other night we had quite the adventure fishing for catfish. Now, my friend... Can I call in that favor? What do you need? You know Angelo Bronte. Well, exactly. We need to make a social call. We were hoping you could row us in quietly one evening around the back of his house. Well, if anyone can, I can. We'll pay you for your trouble. If you bringing him trouble, it won't be no trouble for me. Good. My business partner, Jules, he's out on the skiff. I need to check with him. Plus, I need to check the traps. Would you come with me? Of course. Arthur? Why not? Shouldn't take too long if we can find him. Okay, let's get our lanterns out. Be live. Mind you, there's a lot of gators. Uncommon number. Big ones. Great. Come now, Arthur. It'll take more than a prehistoric reptile to scare you, Shirley. I just want to see you meet your match when it comes to a, an aging predator with a big mouth, Dutch. Arthur here is something of a comedian, Thomas. More of a jester than a gunslinger. 
Well, if you say so, Mr. Dutch. This way. Come on, this way. Follow me here. And stay on the high ground. You call this ground? It feels like water to me. Down here, we can't be too picky there, Mr. Arthur. Got a couple of crayfish traps up ahead. Can't help thinking about how Arthur's boots are filling up with swamp water here. I hate that feeling. And note the dead people on the map. We cannot loot or investigate. I just think it's interesting that they are there. Everyone keeps dumping bodies in the swamp. Mr. Dutch, you keep a lookout for company. Mr. Arthur, check the traps with me. Can you please check the other one for me, Mr. Arthur? And we shall help Thomas with these crawfish traps. This one's empty. All right. I got a few more set over this way. Come on. I don't want to know what just touched my leg. Mr. Dutch, you show you the right fellas to be going out to Angelo Brunton? Oh, he's much more the kind of reptile I can handle. Now stay close. Make sure you follow my line. Oh, I fully intend to, Thomas. You too, Mr. Arthur. You can see why eating in swamp waiting hasn't caught on as a pastime, can't you? I love it out here. Peaceful. Nobody bothering you now. Except for the night folk sometimes. The night folk? Yeah, some strange people around these parts. Wilder than the animals they are. Well, this just gets better and better. Whoa. Stop where you are. It's a gator. Pause at this gator crossing. Sakes, listen to the man before you get us all eaten. All right, let's keep moving. I got another trap by that small island up here. I don't know what's taking Jewel so long with that boat. I think we are all equally keen to find him. Mr. Arthur, this trap is stuck in the mud. It happens. <clears throat> Guess something didn't want to be caught. My gosh. So it's true. What is? There's been talk of a big old bull, but people talk a lot of nonsense. I guess this was... No, but only some huge could do this. Oh, fantastic. Let's hope it bites you first, Dutch. Should we just keep moving? I don't really want to hang around here much longer. All right. I suppose this can wait. Let's go. Hold up. I like this shot. Wish it was in better focus. We'll put this on the IG as well. Link in the description, blah blah blah, second channel, Teespring, Discord, you know how it goes. My god, there's no shortage of them. Good evening. Us or them? Exactly. Come on. We 
really should have run into Jules by now. I reckon we should split up so we can search both sides. Okay, Arthur, since you appear so at home here, you take the right. We'll go left. What? Just keep your eyes open. Jules is up in a tree. Head towards the light. Jules! Hello? Hey! Someone there? I ever saw. Big and nasty. Knocked me off the boat and chased me over here. You must be Jules. Yes. Where is the boat? Over there. I ran. I... No. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, where'd this monster swim off to? first playthrough, I really wondered how Arthur was going to free this boat, and was a little disappointed that we got a cutscene. Still a little disappointed. We should be tapping X or doing some kind of left-right action. I got the scab! It's over here! <sighs> Stop! Got it loose. Come. Good man. All right. Let's get back to the dock. Yes, please. Let's go. Thank God. Okay, let's get back to La Kay. So, uh, who are these fellas, Thomas? Two new friends of mine. I'll explain later. Jules, we are very happy to have finally made your acquaintance. I thought I was gonna be out here all night. What was you doing hiding up in the tree, boy? This gator was huge, Thomas. Twice as big as I ever seen. Twice as angry, too. Help, oh, boy. I think we hit a tree stump. Yeah, I thought we cleared. You're gonna need to jump in and pull us free. Me? Yeah, just do it. Won't take you a minute, boy. Go on. This is a bad idea. <laughs> You'll see any giant monster <laughs> long before it gets anywhere near you. Got a couple crack gunslingers here with the guns loaded. You'll be fine. You didn't see the thing. Yeah, neither did you. It's just a myth, Jules. Now pull. And not complaining, well, complaining a little, and not knowing the first thing about boats. But does Jules have to wade out that far? Does he need all of that rope? Is there some sort of boat physics going on here that I don't understand? Jules? Shit. You won't kid? No, I'm going in. No, no, we can't lose the boat. Arthur will go. Well, quick. Hurry, Arthur. <laughs> At any rate, Jules is way out there, and now we have to rescue him. Oh, 
A very tense scene here, and the music doesn't help. We get back as fast as we can, and we can sneak a look at what's behind us. And there, my friends, is the legendary gator of Lakay. He's all white, and he is basically a dinosaur. He shrugs off bullets and is really mad at us. Oh, your boy doesn't look too good there. Here, take this. Try to stop the bleeding. You're gonna be okay, son. You're gonna be okay. Just thank your old Uncle Dutch. I heard that. Let's help Jules. He'll be okay. There's still a lot of blood. You need to put pressure on it. I've stopped the bleeding. I think you'll be okay if you don't get a fever. We can bring down a fever. A fever is the least of our worries. Look who's back. God damn. Okay, he's gone for now, but he'll be back. Okay, I think it's had enough. Now, Jesus, can we get back now? <sighs> You're gonna be okay, kid. Sorry, Jules. Guess all them stories was true. Big and bad. That's unusual. Normally, the little one's angry. Big one's is lazy. Well. I guess he never outgrew his anger. Kind of reminds me of you, Arthur. You know, I don't think I've ever seen you squeal before, Dutch. <laughs> I weren't the one squealing. Yeah, well, you weren't in the water with him. And this poor boy was nearly dinner. Can we get some help? Jules has been bitten. Uh, oh, my God. There's a monster out here. Uh, he's been bitten, but he's alive. Uh, Just keep him warm. Uh, Feed him garlic for the infection. Thank you. Both of you. I'm at your service anytime you need. Thank you, Thomas. Where can we find you? You just meet me back here. Very good. Can one of you help me put the boat back out? Sure. I'm gonna head back to camp and placate the irritable Miss O'Shea, who's causing more trouble. I'll collect the boys. Meet you back here, Arthur. <clears throat> Mr. Arthur? <clears throat> Old Brunty. A bad man. I know. Killed some good folks. Hurt a lot of people. Well, he definitely lacks a certain charm. I'll see you soon. You be safe. You got monsters out here. Well. Arthur and Dutch are in a weird place. 
Dutch is paranoid, and Arthur is confused by this new direction of leadership. Also, he's not sold on Tahiti. I hope you enjoyed watching this commentary as much as I enjoyed making it. At least we got to meet the legendary Gator. Arthur will be happy to introduce him to the bolt action and some explosive ammo right between the eyes. I'll see you in part 65. This video is sponsored by Super Antonio Part 2, my second channel that features more podcast related content in addition to gameplay from all of the other video games I enjoy. You can find the link at the bottom of the channel page or in the description of this video. Like and subscribe for short stories, book, movie, and TV reviews, and also commentaries where I talk about whatever is interesting me at the moment. I am Super Antonio. Thanks for watching. I appreciate your views. Like, comment, share, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell for daily Red Dead Redemption 2 content. We shall meet again. Further on down the trail. Hey, partner. I can't believe it! An Odrisco in my camp!